Well, it was quite the scene at Joel Osteen's Lakewood Church. During the Pentecost Sunday service on Sunday, June 5th, right as Mr. Osteen was getting ready to take the stage for his sermon, well, a little incident took place amongst the people, the thousands upon thousands that were in attendance to see Joel. And what ensued from there? It wasn't just what these women did. You know, call it an eruption, a protest, a disgusting display of degeneracy. You could call it many different things. But even maybe more than that is how Austin responded. We'll get into all of it. Stick with me, guys. We'll talk about it in less than 10 seconds. First, if we could, if YT even lets you hit that like button for me, please share the video, hit the bell, subscribe. And I wore the glasses because I'm blind. So this was right uh, before the 11 a.m. service. You got Austin. He's getting ready to go up there and preach. Or his version of preaching, motivational speaking, whatever you want to call it. All of a sudden, as the congregation is getting ready, you know, to sit down and take in the service, you got a woman that stands up and takes off her dress. She strips down to just her underwear right there in the service okay there's all sorts of videos going around uh, about this right now all over social media uh, what one twitter account uh, texas uh you know a word writes uh, is posting all these videos about this uh i'll put a main link in the description uh to this story if you want to follow there's some links then in there if you want to actually watch the videos, I'm not going to directly link them uh, here, but you can follow the links in the other article that I'm going to post if you want to check those out. So, but as this goes on, you got this woman, she takes off her dress, she strips down to her underwear, starts screaming all sorts of support for Roe and profanity. I mean, all over the place. And you had two others then after her stand up and do the same exact thing. This was a part of a team of about 13 of these activists. And I thought this was funny because they were based in Austin, Texas. You know, you got Joel Austin's church that's there in Houston. You got Lakewood Church there. You know, Austin, one of the most woke, liberal parts in all of Texas. And so I wasn't surprised to see this is where they came from. This is where their whole entire group is based out of. So as this is going on, and you've got now the rest of these women now that have now stripped off to their underwear and they're screaming profanity at Austin and they're, you know, chanting all sorts of stuff about Roe and the babies and everything else like that. They immediately get met by security, thank God, who start to try to take them away. But as they're doing this, these women are still screaming all this stuff. So you got Austin up there. Now, for his part, he's up there. You know, you know how he is with his personality, right? Mr. Just, oh, everything's all right, man. We're just going to smile. Everything's good. You know, God is good, my friend. He's up there and he's just saying the whole time, well, we're, we're going to get started in one minute, uh, you know, but you know, we're just, we'll just wait one more minute. You know, God is good. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful. You know, we're going to have a good service today. And, uh, you know, I, I'm just happy to be in the house of the Lord with people of faith today, you know, and, and then he says, you know, as long as I keep talking, then, you know, then, you know, you won't be able to hear anything else that's going on. You know, he didn't directly call them out, nothing like that. And I thought this was a, here's, here's my thing. This was a missed opportunity for Austin to be able to use that platform to mention something to the congregation about life and how important it is and why the church is being targeted, not just his, but so many others as well. And I'll get to the the details on why they chose his church here in a second because they interviewed one of the girls that was part of this deal but austin didn't take that opportunity he just kind of said oh you know everything's good man smiling and everything's all right and god's good he's on the throne and we'll just wait one more minute we'll just wait one more minute he just kept saying that okay but a missed opportunity where he could have took a stand there during his Sunday service, you got all these people watching, all those in attendance, all those that watch him online, everywhere else. He could have said 
something about how the church needs to take a solid stance when it comes to life. But he didn't do that. And here's the other thing too. Austin is not known, nor is his church as a group that, you know, normally makes these sorts of bold proclamations for life. And that's very telling about Austin and his ministry, because this guy is, again, more about motivational speaking. He doesn't want to get involved in those sorts of issues. Oh, but wait a minute. Didn't he march with BLM a couple years ago? Oh, that's right. He did. After everything with the Floyd stuff, you had... Joel out there marching with BLM. But yet he doesn't want to mention anything about these women in his church. He doesn't want to call it out for what it is and use it as an opportunity to stress his support for life and how important it is. No, but he was okay with marching with BLM. Perfectly fine with that. You can't just ignore these things, but he don't want to ruffle anyone's feathers. But he'll virtue signal and he'll stand with BLM and all that. But he doesn't want to get involved with issues he should be as a church, as a pastor. No. So in a lot of ways, I look at the fact that his church was targeted with these women. And again, this is disgusting degeneracy on what they did here. Austin is not someone who's some sort of a life champion by any means. But then when the interview came, we got the answer. One of the women that was part of this whole protest said that she attended Austin's church as a child and knew him personally. And the reason that they chose his church is because, well, it attracts so many people. It gets a big audience. That was the whole reason. Because of the fact that they knew they'd have a big audience there in attendance. And thousands upon thousands and thousands of people watching everywhere else around the world. They would be seen. It wasn't so much about the fact that, you know, Austin doesn't really speak out much for life. If at all. But it was just about getting that big audience. They admitted so much in the interview. But again, a wasted opportunity that Austin could have said something. Chose not to. At the time I'm recording this, a comment from Lakewood Church has not yet been given on this. There may, you know, be one now, you know, come later if you're watching this later. And one may be out already. But Austin is someone that time and time again refuses to acknowledge these things. He'll virtue signal to the left. But when it comes to these issues that are crucial to the church, what they should be getting involved with, he doesn't want to touch it. You know, he said as much in an interview a month ago, and I talked about it in a separate video, that, you know, he, he keeps his messages soft for a reason because... We, we just, we love everybody, Austin said. Well, he said that, by the way, too, when those uh, ladies were stripping off their dresses and everything else, too. He said, we just love everybody. Everything's good. We love everybody. God's on the throne. It's good. But that they want to meet people where they are. So they don't want to do too much to offend them or push them away. He said this in an interview. You get these people now, they're openly telling you who they are. They're false teachers. And yet still, tens of thousands of people attend their services weekly. Watch them every single time online. You know why? Because they want a comfortable message. They don't want real truth. They want motivational you know, speakers to give them a good feel-good message on a Sunday, and then they go home. That's all they want. They don't want anything real. It's sad. But Jesus said this would happen in the last days. False Christs and false prophets would arise and deceive. What did he say? A few? No, he said many, many. 
lot of people. Life is a major issue. And these women showing up here and doing this at his church in Austin just kind of shrugged it off. Shows you what a coward he truly is. I hope others that maybe didn't see that before, you start to now. After this, I can only hope and pray. I'll have more information on this for you in the description. You guys can let me know your thoughts about it. Also, if you enjoy my daily content, talking about end-time Bible prophecy headlines, and you want to help support my ministry with a generous donation, you can click the link to my PayPal down below in the description or sign up on my Patreon for just 5 bucks a month. When you do that, you will be alerted for all the content I put out. Don't rely on YT for these alerts, guys. They barely push them out anymore. I am pretty much censored on all levels. So not only will you get the alerts, but you can leave your comments over there completely censorship-free and send me direct messages. Again, all those links are down below. A big, big thank you to everybody already contributing and those thinking of doing so. Thank you as well. Your generosity is greatly appreciated. Now, I'm not done just yet. I don't ever leave any video without giving people the opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. If that's you, if you're watching this video now and you've never received Christ into your life, I'd like to lead you in this prayer right now. This is a prayer you can do in your own words, but I'll give you the steps you need to bring it before the Lord today. First thing that you want to do right off the top, acknowledge that you're a sinner. That is something that we all are. But let me tell you the good news about this. God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to die on that cross for the sins of all the world. He died and rose again for you and me. He paid the cost. What you have to do is repent of your sin. Repent means to turn from your sin, not just to say you're sorry, but to turn from lifestyles or habits, whatever it is in your life that goes against the word of God. You ask Jesus to forgive you, He'll wipe that sin away. The Bible says he doesn't remember it any longer. And then you invite Jesus into your life to be your Lord and Savior. When you do that, you become born again, a child of God. You will have eternal life. Trust me when I tell you there is no greater decision that you will ever make than the one you do to give your life to Christ. I pray you make that decision today. I'll have more on this for you guys down below. As I mentioned, you can let me know your thoughts. Don't forget the links to donate to our ministry are there as well. It is a great blessing if you could help us out. Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'll be back with more. You guys take care. Please be safe out there. God bless each and every single one of you. And I'll talk with you soon.